Nice. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you all for joining me. My name is Edgar Aguirre. I'm a student at California State University. Um, I study information systems and technology, and I've kind of took a weird route to getting into the software development field. So I go to school for cybersecurity, and I was able to land a software engineer internship uh, at the Home Depot corporate office over the summer. Now, I did that through several different ways. Um, the biggest thing was LinkedIn and coming to events like this, which is uh, the meetups and hanging out with amazing people like Joanne, Vast, and a few other people uh, that I met here. Uh, they're all very knowledgeable and uh, helped me out and guided me along the way. So uh, I wanna just go over LinkedIn because I think that's one of the biggest tools that you can leverage to actually let other people know what you are capable of, what you can do, and what you have done. So <clears throat> one of the things that um, I hope you are all familiar with LinkedIn and have a LinkedIn profile already. So we're just gonna show you a couple ways to improve your LinkedIn profile. So uh, why use LinkedIn? Uh, once you put your resume and LinkedIn profile out there, people are gonna find you. That's what I did. Uh, I simply updated my uh, LinkedIn profile while I was in Atlanta, Georgia. I reached out to my mentor and I said, hey, I only did a little bit of stuff here this summer, but I learned a lot, so how can I tell people and show people that I learned a lot while I was here? And he helped me clean up my LinkedIn profile and put some good work experience uh, on here. So I'll go over that in a little bit, but um, it also lets employers and other people um, see what you're interested in and what you follow and like and I'll go ahead and show you guys an example of that so um, when you go on uh, someone's profile you're able to see their um, their interest have you guys ever got a chance to check out somebody else's interests on LinkedIn so if, if they're your recruiter uh, that's uh, gonna be a big uh, selling point for you uh, what does this person follow what is this person into so we're going to use Joanne, for example. I checked him out earlier. So he has all kinds of experience. He's been a mentor. He works at Esri. He's on an outreach program. But uh, let's go ahead and scroll down to the bottom. So you know he goes above and beyond because he has all these licenses and certifications. We'll go over some of these things right now. And interests. So I want to see what is this guy into. We're going to go ahead and check out and see all. So we're going to see that he uh, it's, uh, follows Bill Gates, Tim O'Reilly, and Justin Trudeau, I'm not sure who that is, but Brian and uh, there you go. Uh, I know, I'm not sure what he does. So, but uh, and uh, he's also following a lot of software development uh, profiles. So this guy is clearly into software development, Home Depot, UPS, and all kinds of other things. So if I was a recruiter and I know that he's in, uh, he's in the know with software development, it gives me a good indication that he knows what he's doing, right? And um, another thing while I wanted to cover while I was here is the skills. So as you can see, uh, Joanne is really skilled. And as you, can as you can tell, several people have endorsed his skills. This is something that I didn't really think of. I was like, okay, why put my skills? I only have a month experience in this, three months experiences. But it lets the, um, it lets the recruiter know that you actually have these skills and you can do them. So <clears throat> the way software works and the way some of these uh, software recruiting uh, things work is that they put algorithms, they look for certain skill sets. For example, if I wanna hire a software developer, I wanna make sure that they have web development experience, jQuery, um, Node.js, we're gonna use the LAMP stack. So if my candidate doesn't have those things, they're probably not gonna show up on my profile. And that's one of the biggest takeaways that I got from it. So we're gonna look for a software development job. I'm not sure if, you, if any of you have looked for a software development job, but um, this is what I've done. Uh, I actually today went for like looking for entry level positions and I added a few things that were not on there. Do you guys have any questions so far? Yes. So if you, if uh, I just um, to interject on what you yeah. said, um, if you want to look for on LinkedIn for the job that you, the dream job you want, you look under the search engine, right? Yeah. So you look under the search, and you could put, um, like for example, right now I'm putting software engineer, 
entry level. So they clearly know that either you're either a recent boot camp grad or that you're a college graduate. Those are the most traditional fields that uh, people get into the field. There's other ones that are self-taught, but you, it is more difficult uh, from what I've seen to get an interview. So um, LinkedIn may be a good way, but uh, coming to events like this and finding out about uh, jobs may be another way also. This is just for you to showcase your skills but you would hit um, software engineering entry level. And I actually signed up recently for a version of LinkedIn that's called LinkedIn Premium that allows me to see this if I have the matching skills that these jobs are looking for. So Lockheed Martin, and I think I saw a really good one uh, that was like Boeing. So we're gonna check it out. And So earlier I updated it, but it's not updating here. As you can see, I already have six out of the top 10 skills that these employers are looking for. So I updated it to have uh, JavaScript, and uh, I think that was it. But now you can see at least where you stand and the things you need to learn to order to get these types of jobs. And that's something that I was unfamiliar with. That's something that uh, actually someone in Atlanta had shown me, and I was like, man, I wish I had known this before. But um, also, I look for the people who are already in these current positions, and I see that the skills that they have. And I see if um, I have those skills as well. So uh, you wanna make sure that you get endorsed by people who you work with. Like, uh, for example, uh, this young lady is uh, working with the Mozilla Outreach Project, so uh, the people that she meets there can uh, endorse her and let people know that she's good with Git and she's good with uh, React and JavaScript, and it lets employers know that she does know what she's talking about. So Headshot is another one that I wanted to go over. So um, it definitely is important. You may not think so. Um, other people have different opinions. Personally, I think you should have a clean professional one, but someone like Joanne, uh, who has uh, six, 10 years experience, that may not be the case. He, uh, he can back up his work, for, but for someone who is uh, trying to get an entry level position, it may be more important for you to have a different type of look due to the, what that employer is looking for. So I always uh, kind of like to recommend that plain business style. Um, I'm not sure it's a little different for women. Yes. Uh, just to kind of put my two unwarranted cents in there. Um, for those of you guys trying to get into the industry, make sure you have a, a photo where you're smiling. Uh, I'm not smiling in mine. I look pretty pissed. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that's one of the things that I've been told uh, by different companies is that they look at these pictures and they try to see if you fit into the into the culture, right? So they want happy people. They don't want angry people. So. Yeah, first impressions uh, mean a lot. So uh, I was just kind of looking at different people since I will be uh, interviewing for Google this month. I was kind of... Uh, doing what uh, I'm showing you guys right now. I was looking up people in the job that I wanted. I found this guy, Cameron Brown. He wrote a Medium post about his experience uh, getting the internship. So I looked him up. I saw what he had. He was a computer science student, and he's been in the UK for a month. Uh, I messaged him a little bit aggressively. I was like, hey, I seen you got this uh, internship. <laughs> I like messaged him five minutes after, and he stopped responding, which is OK. It's normal. Like, Not every approach works. These are approaches that I'm giving you. They may not have worked, but they have worked for me and it's gotten me this far. And I hope these, these work for you also. So these are other things he, um, he's done. He's been a teacher at this code club. I tutor students, so I don't put that on there, but when the employers ask, I tell them and I should update it and put tutor also. Um, it also lets them know, um, it lets the recruiters know that you are willing to work in a team environment and help others out. So culture was a big one, uh, positive attitude, and willingness to work in a team. So you could be the best guy, but uh, if you're not willing to work in a team, they may not get you. You know, depending on the company, big companies, I know that they're looking for a team environments, smaller startups, hey, they may be okay with you being the best guy in the world and having a bad attitude. But I'm just uh, giving you some different opinions. Well, I'm not sure if I showed you guys my profile, but uh, this is the one that I took not so long ago, and I'll be taking another one soon. There you go, smiley right there.
So we already went, kind of covered a little bit about your skills. Um, uh, I showed you how uh, if you're looking for a certain job, go ahead and add them, but don't just add them. Make sure you're able to speak on those skills. So I spoke to a couple of people and I let them know that, hey, I've only done this for a month or three months. They're like, heck yeah, that's completely relevant. You have more experience, working experience than others who don't, haven't done it at all. So I went ahead and put some of those skills on my LinkedIn profile, for example, get pair programming, extreme programming, those are things that I've all learned over the summer and I was able to add to my LinkedIn profile. And also when I'm on the phone with uh, interviewers, um, I tell them that I have transferable skills. So I kind of already covered tutoring and mentoring people. So it lets people know that you're willing to work in a team and you're able to articulate these complex ideas to people who are not familiar with the subject. And that's a skill in itself. I know Joanne does a great job of it. He kind of dumbs it down for <laughs> me a little bit. I'm like, oh, okay, I can see that. So what I do to learn these things is I watch videos, very technical videos, and then I watch other uh, videos on that same subject by a different person. So they kind of give me the, like, the super technical definition and then I get another video where it gives me a more um, high level approach so that I can explain these things to the business people, to the interviewer and the technical interviewers because uh, the people you speak to, there may be different people. The first one that initially that you reach out to is usually a business person and they don't have all the technical knowledge. They just kind of know, oh hey, this guy seems like he would be a good fit. He has all the things that we're looking for. Uh, will we hire this guy? And then you gotta move on to the technical part. And the willingness to learn. Um, I already kind of touched over Joanne's willingness to learn. He has like 30 different certificates and licenses for different things. And uh, I have very similar things. I was in, involved in the computer science club at San Bernardino Valley College. I'm involved in the information uh, security club at Cal State San Bernardino and the computer science club and Toastmasters club. And then I come to he my places like this, meetups, and I let them know of all the resources that I use, like Udemy, Udacity, Free Code Camp, Pluralsight, and YouTube to learn all these things on my own. So that's kind of just touching back to how I go above and beyond to make sure that, that I'm learning all these things. I tell them that I am learning all this stuff on my own, and I don't know software development, but this is what I've done to get to this point, you know. I've already shared where uh, I study, the things that I've done, and the things that I'm doing to get there. Okay, and well, another thing is how can you add value? So every kind of relationship that I have with different organizations, I always look for how can I add value to them. So for this um, team or meetup, I see, okay, I'm not good at software development, so I can't really share super technical things with you, but I can show you soft skills and LinkedIn. So that's kind of my trade off with uh, people like this. And same thing with people in tech and the teams that I've been on, I've been the guy that's uh, been really outgoing, cheerful, and able to talk to the different teams. And that's kind of what's gotten me this far, the soft skills. Um, there is a lot of opportunities in the tech field for the soft skills. So don't forget about the soft skills, just coming to events like this and meeting people from uh, different avenues, from uh, non-traditional backgrounds. You can learn a little bit from everybody. And um, this is, a, I'll share a couple other things just uh, to kind of add, uh, piggyback off this, how can I add value towards the end. So I already showed you how to look for the position, uh, adding some of those skills that will pretty much bring you on a recruiter's radar and actually have the opportunity to interview for them because you may be getting overlooked even though if you have those skills if you're not showcasing those skills to recruiters they may not be they may not see them so I already touched on this but uh, as you guys know you guys are developers so if you write a program that says hey my, I want my candidate to have uh, C experience, database experience, I want them to know um, React and Spring Boot, and if they don't have them, it's kind of a joke, kick rocks. 
uh, if not kick rocks, uh, but you'll be overlooked because you're not a strong candidate to them. Not because you don't know it, but because you're not showing it on your profile or your, on your resume. So make sure you include all of those. And uh, this is kind of just touching back to some of the things that we covered already. Um, when I'm applying for a position, I look for people already in the position and I look for the skills that they have. We're gonna go back to Cameron Brown. Uh, what sets them apart? Are they new graduates, experience? So I can kind of get an idea of uh, what it is that they're looking for. So. Uh, we'll kind of also look at another one that uh, was recently on here. So I had to do this because I didn't, I don't know anyone who's actually been in this program, so I didn't know where to start. They gave me a lift, list of uh, concepts to study, but it was a very extensive list and I wanted to make sure that I was getting the most out of it. So there's this other guy who I added who uh, was from France. So we'll see his experience. He is an apprentice also there. Um, same thing, diploma engineer. Information engineer. Yeah, this guy doesn't really have much that he's showing, but he uh, clearly knows his stuff, or else he wouldn't have gotten that far. Uh, he doesn't have that many endorsements, and all we can see is that he went to this school and he's only he's not graduated yet, so it's not telling us much there. Uh, he's definitely doing the networking part because he has over 500 connections, though. You can also search for them by their GitHubs and uh, research them other ways, but this is a really easy way to see what sets them apart. And then once you have uh, cleaned up your profile, added the skills, cleaned up your resume to actually reflect uh, what you're able to do and what you're capable of, you can go ahead and apply for the jobs. So I've just shown you a few ways where you can search in the job title, entry level, to match the uh, positions you're looking for. Everyone has different positions. Not everyone wants to be a software engineer. Someone wants to be maybe UX or uh, project management. You can also type in project manager entry level or project manager no experience. Um, it sounds sim simple and very easy, but it's something I never thought of and someone introduced me to and I was like, wow, that's so easy. How come I didn't think of that before? It would have made uh, applying for internships or these types of jobs a lot easier in the past. So um, also another strategy that I used is um, I would go to these job fairs and I would interview the interviewers. So instead of telling them all about myself, I would tell them like, hey, you know, I'm a student at uh, Cal State San Bernardino. I graduated in two years. What can I do from now to then to get to um, where I need to be to get this job? Uh, what are you guys looking for in the perfect candidate? And if I work for you, if they're like the hiring manager, I would tell them this is like the million dollar question that actually got me like the job offer. I, I told them if I work for you, how can I make your job easier? And that led to like an hour conversation where my manager pretty much uh, kind of unofficially offered me a job. And that was like two, three weeks in. So just adding value uh, to the team that you're on and the that's one of the main things that you could do. Not many people are willing to go above and beyond. I'm willing to go above and beyond. I come to these events and help you guys and show you what I've learned through all my experience. I spent a lot of hours, time, and resources uh, to research all these things, and I just want to share them with you. So this is I, I add value. And uh, yeah, I just pretty much let them know that um, what are they looking for. So a few things that they're looking for is uh, some of the things that we already covered is a willingness to learn, aptitude, can you solve these uh, complex problems, um, and um, ability to work in a team. Are you approachable, or are you always the, the guy who's upset, who uh, uh, gets angry about every little thing at the job? No, are you a guy that comes in there with a positive attitude, smiling, compliments everyone? That's, those are the types of people that they want in the team. Um, I always kind of research the companies that I'm going to for the job fairs. I tell them, hey, I noticed like, uh, for example, Tesla or Google, 
Um, I kind of have a couple of questions that I want to ask, so you can always uh, kind of keep those in the back of your mind, like, hey, you guys are doing uh, a lot in AI, what are your thoughts on this? And uh, just, uh, it lets them know that you're keeping up with the company, you're up to date, and you really want to work for them. And then, this is just ask them uh, something specific, like let's say, for example, hey, I know this apprenticeship program is pretty new in the United States, uh, what are you guys looking to do with this? What's the end goal for this? Um, and also, add my LinkedIn profile to my resume. Sometimes you don't always apply through resume, uh, through LinkedIn. You may apply for a job somewhere else, but make sure that you're adding your LinkedIn profile on your resume. Anyone have any questions so far? Okay. This is uh, loud. I'm sorry, guys. This is super loud. <laughs> I'm trying to be sneaky here. It's not working. <laughs> okay, so meetups. Uh, this is uh, just kind of like uh, get off your butt, uh, do some work, uh, contribute in whatever way you can. Um, like I said, I don't know that much, but uh, I'm willing to learn. And uh, if I don't know much, I just kind of stick to the people who do know a lot and then just ask them, hey, uh, how can I help? Uh, how can I learn a little bit? Uh, I don't think I could do that, but is there something maybe a little bit easier that I could do? And uh, just start off some way, some way. just uh, start with little small Hello World uh, programs and kind of start tweaking it from there. Uh, that's what I did over the summer. I just started really uh, far back, because, uh, go ahead. So I wanted to ask you, how yes. long have you been with Toastmasters? Toastmasters, I was with them for three months at Cal State San Bernardino, and I actually found another one in Atlanta, Georgia at the office that I was working at, the company that I was working. They had their own for the building. So, oh, six months. Right yeah. on. That's a good organization. Yeah, uh, it really helped me network in there. Um, at school, I met a lot of helpful people who were not in the IT industry, but they also gave me a lot of tips, like that question that led to kind of the unofficial offer was from a business student. It had nothing to do with IT. So um, I always kind of try to learn a little bit from everyone. So I network a lot. So meetups being one of them, school, alumni associations, uh, Toastmasters. Uh, I volunteer at a lot of events, uh, school and work events. Um, it just looks good on your resume. It lets people know that you're involved in the community, and then you meet a lot of cool people while they're there. They may not be in the tech field, but you know they could be HR, and they could put in a good word for you in the future. You never know. Uh, it's just kind of piggybacking for some students. So if you're currently at a university, they have a lot of clubs, organizations, career centers, success centers, workshops, job fairs. There's a lot of good people at those workshops and job fairs. Actually, I learn a little bit every time I go. They have uh, different approaches on things. For example, like dress. Uh, this last one that I went to was a super old school. They wanted us to stick to like uh, kind of this look right now. This is not always the look that I go for, but uh, from time to time, this is how I dress for interviews. Uh, for the Home Depot, I wore uh, tan jeans and a collared shirt, and that's how everyone was dressing there. So I was like, Phew. good thing I didn't go in a full suit. So it would have been a little awkward. Uh, these are just a couple other resources that I used when, uh, um, when I was looking for a job. So I didn't know what I wanted to do. Let's say, for example, I was a computer science student, and I didn't know what type of jobs were in the computer science industry. Uh, you guys kind of have a good idea since you guys are at this meetup, but if you are unsure or kind of uh, considering changing one, you could always ch um, search this website. This website is onitonline.org, and it was created by the Department of Statistics and Labor, and it pretty much shows uh, the skills needed for a certain job uh, title. So, for example, when I search uh, software engineer, uh, you can see some stuff already up here. Huh? So, we're gonna search uh, network administrator. This is kind of one of the things I considered a while ago. I liked it, I didn't love it, but I still found out uh, a lot about what they do. It also gives you uh, some of their salary ranges and things that they want you to know. So database management, development environment software, network monitoring software, just a lot of other things. Uh, this is great if you're kind of uh, switching careers and you want some more information without having to look everywhere. 
it's all in one centralized location. So right here, we're gonna go to software developer application. It gives you, I'm sure it's gonna give you a long list. So it's kind of generic database, development environment, object or component oriented software, program testing software. This was super helpful for me. Um, actually, this was the reason I joined LinkedIn. So the reason I joined LinkedIn originally was because I didn't know anyone in the IT field. I didn't know what a software developer did. I didn't know what a database administrator did, or a systems analyst, a security analyst. And I looked for those people and saw their jobs and kind of their job functions and titles and their certifications or uh, degrees and how they got there. So this uh, actually was shown to me by one of my professors. I was like, hey, there's already something that's like that. You should check it out. And I just wanted to share that with you. Is there a specific uh, job function that you guys want me to look up? Anyone not in uh, not in software engineering? They're all just tired. <laughs> okay. So that wraps up the um, uh, leveraging LinkedIn to land your dream job. Jobs. So all in all, update your profile, update your skills. Add your LinkedIn profile to your resume. Uh, make sure that you're giving off the right impression by changing your profile picture if you have it. Make sure to smile in that picture. Uh, network, and that's it. Thank you. Um, I just want to say, if you guys don't have a job in the industry yet, don't wait till you're applying to start you know, networking with people do it before, right? Even after you get the position, once you're at the company, keep networking, right? You don't know, uh, any of those people can leave that company and work at a, I don't say better company, but a better company, and they can help you go into that other company as well, right? Um, also, you can use LinkedIn not just to find, you know, jobs that just show up on your, uh, on your feed, but you can target companies. You can. I don't, again, I don't want to say stalking, but <laughs> you can do some stalking on there. Uh, you can look at the company, look at the people that work there, uh, look at the skills they have, kind of compare your skills to them. Uh, it's a lot of research, but it's, it's a wonderful tool. Um, one thing that he also said was reaching out to people and asking questions. I've done that and it's, it's overwhelmingly helpful because you can say, hey, so have you uh, faced this in your job before? How do you approach it? Uh, if you're stuck on something, say, hey, uh, have you utilized this technology before at, at so-and-so? Uh, how do you guys uh, fix it or whatever? So it's, again, it's creating those connections. Those people are just as nervous as you guys are when you guys talk to them. So they're, they're people, that's all it is. There's people with the job you want, so it's pretty easy. How do you go about like messaging people, you know, the company mm -hmm. you want to work for without sounding fake? Well, you can ask them what they're, Okay, you're not gonna say, "Hey, can can I get a job at your place?" Because you know, like, I've gotten those those uh, messages. I'm like, "Yeah, I'm not responding to you." Yeah. Uh, so what you do is, well, at least what I've done in my experience is ask them, "Hey, so I noticed that you're working on uh, technology X, Y, and Z. Like, what what have you been working on lately?" And then I start, you know, that conversation. Oh, cool. So can can you show me some of your work? Um, that's I think the easiest way to start because it's, it's something that's genuine. You really want to see what they're working on. Hopefully, you want to see what they're working on. Yeah. Uh, and you can keep that conversation going until you find a good way to kind of say, hey, I actually do want a job, right? So ask them, hey, have, have you heard of any positions? Again, you're not gonna do it day one. It takes a while, you're, you're playing the, again, <laughs> goddamn, it sounds like I'm a bad person. You're playing the, the long game, right? Yeah. Uh, but in, the, in that turn, you're also making these connections, you're making friends as well, so. Yeah. so I, I started doing the, like, connecting with people at a certain company, it was like, just that part is kind of weird, man. Like, how do you go about it? As soon like, as you make that one friend, and they can later vouch that, oh yeah, we've been talking for a while, yeah. then it's easier to connect to more people at that company. Next thing you know, it's like half of the company are on, on your LinkedIn. It's like, yeah, did you get this from Chris? Oh yeah, I did too. Yeah. yeah. Well, I was there. <laughs> well, then just to piggyback off that, that's kind of something that I learned, but it was more like networking, not really LinkedIn. Yeah. Uh, one way that someone showed me that they did, they said, hey, you know, uh, they're a college student, they're gonna be graduating in nine months or oh, a year. They say, hey, I just let them know, hey, I'm a college student. Um, I see that you're currently a software developer at X company. 
Uh, I would love to be in that position later on in the future. Uh, do you mind sharing some of your work history or some of the things that um, you have done to get you this far? Uh, would you be open to a 10, 15 minute conversation sometime in the near future? And that's how they started off the conversation. They also pretty much went on to say they, they did pretty much follow up and continue every once in a while, like every month or so. And then later on down the road, they would say, hey, you know, I'll be in, in the, in the a hunt for a new job uh, coming whenever, uh, May 2020, do you know of any open positions that uh, may be a good fit for me? And that's the approach that they used. Uh, it was a really good one. They also went a little bit further and uh, kind of, if they had their phone number already, they would say, hey, uh, is there a certain problem that you're facing in your current job? And they would write, um, they would just, you know, listen to that problem and uh, within a week, they would write a one-page explanation on how they can solve their problem. So it's pretty much just going back to adding value. Yeah. How do you add value to that other person? Because uh, the way I see it, it's like a relationship. It's not just a one-way relationship, uh, you know, take, take, take. It's a, it's a give and take relationship. So you're giving them something that like, hey, this is actually one, one way to uh, solve this problem that I'm facing. And you know, they'll consider you or they'll be more open to considering you for a position later on down the road. Are we still recording? Oh, I can't tell you guys the story yet. Go ahead. I was just gonna say that I really liked how you said, if I work for you, how can I make your job easier or how, how can I add more value to the job, exactly. to your job to make it um, you know, easier for you? Yeah. And a lot of people are gonna want that because when you can help them make their life a lot easier, they'll love you. Yeah, you know? that, that's what got me the, the uh, return offer so just that one question alone but it was a series of things that I was already doing but that was one of the things that they were like man no one's ever asked me that before um, is, is there like a specific website where you could get like the certifications to add, add it to your uh, LinkedIn account or uh, it just depends on what you're going for like you see Joanna has a bunch of which ones, yeah, I made them all up. <laughs> 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 he have his own website and everything. <laughs> 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 I studied at best oh, school ever. Yeah. That's a cool new feature too. I I know they're partnered up. I don't know if they still are with Linda. Yeah, uh, it's LinkedIn. now LinkedIn. No, LinkedIn, LinkedIn. LinkedIn. Is now LinkedIn. Oh, well, there LinkedIn you go. owns Wonderful, even better. Yep. Uh, so if you take those courses, they show up on your profile. You can add them. And actually, it's really nice because Linda had a better quality of classes than LinkedIn actually had. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So now they're incorporated. <laughs> yeah. So hopefully, the, the right? other ones will, you know. <laughs> hopefully, they can invest more money into those courses. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they're really helpful. Yeah, they are. Um, there's also <coughs> like Udemy, Udacity, Plural Site. Mm -hmm. um, they also offer like certs, and there's a couple of other <coughs> ones you can uh, look at. I'm not sure what uh, specifically you're looking for. Is there a certain like technology or skill that you're trying no, to have? Just for web development uh, in general. So, yeah. in all honesty, um, I've yet to find any. <coughs> it's gonna sound so sad. Um, any real use for any of the little sort of certifications I put up there? Uh, I can't imagine any of my supervisors has thought and said, "Oh, this guy has a lot of certifications." I was about to ask you about that. Like, yeah, no. Has it really made a difference? No, not at all. Yeah. Uh, Except for practicing, obviously. And honestly, yes. Yeah. You can have twenty different certifications, <coughs> but if you retain nothing as far as skills, what's the point of those yeah. certifications, right? Sure. So it's it's more useful to have actual uh, built projects that you can show your employer. Or a potential employer and, and kind of walk them through what you did there uh then showing them hey i completed this they gave me a anyone could have completed it for you that's yeah it doesn't <laughs> you can sleep through most of this yeah of course <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you might be a really good test taker one of the great tools for that is github yes oh, because yeah. if you just design little projects or do projects in groups then it shows eight, you know how to use GitHub, which is really important to the work Very industry. Much. And also it shows that you know how to work in a group. Mm -hmm. So, and it shows that you could do the project. So, you know, you get a lot out of it. I have a question for GitHub too. Um, when you're like uh, pushing things to your GitHub, does it matter if it's like crappy code that you're working on at the moment or should you only like upload the best code 
Yeah. So you want to take it or take it? Okay. So be organized. Uh, if you're working on something that's gonna be crappy, create a branch, right? Yeah. Uh, if you don't want that repository to be seen by anyone ever in the whole world, in your whole life, uh, make it private. Uh, now you can make as many repositories as you want private. Uh, oh, you can't. Yeah, free. Yeah. yeah, for free. Because I have one. I'd like to try that. <laughs> I'm just using this to my commit history shows. Can you delete old repositories? Like, if you did a crappy repos mm. repository, can you go back and delete it? Yeah. After yeah, you're yeah. Do you lose it in your history of the little like you know how it tracks your like? I believe you do stuff? actually. But yeah. I mean, I think here's there's a thing. warning that comes up in some. If it's something you didn't tell in 17. It's not showing up for 2019. Yeah. So who cares, right? I've got like 20 versions of my portfolio from boot camp. And oh, well, there you go. So you're going to have to do some forensic analysis. Of that. Yeah. I don't know. Um, but yeah, uh, I would say if you are in the mode of hunting for a job, you have to put like your best face on, right? Honestly, all of this is you selling yourself at that point. So I would say the it. other thing is if you want to keep it on there to keep your things is just do a readme to say this is a general repository for me to do practice and you know yeah. so that it's clear that this is my junk folder gotcha. you know and then put the better code and obviously don't tag that one so that it shows up first. Yeah. <laughs> gotcha. That's, that's, that's a good suggestion. Actually. You have that option to put like the six, uh, six, six. Okay, wrong one.